Hello, my name is Harv Tannenbaum. I'm a professor at Central Penn and I've been teaching networking, programming, and network security topics for about 15 years now. So Harv, can you tell us a little bit about the cyber attack that took place this weekend? Um, sure. So um, somebody, and we don't know who, released a virus attacking a Windows server vulnerability. And uh, basically it's a type of attack called ransomware where the virus uh, takes over the computer, encrypts all of the files, and then sends you a message saying, pay some money or we'll destroy all your files or you will never get them back again. Okay. And that's basically what happened. It affected companies in like 150 countries. So it was a pretty significant attack. It was a very significant attack. Okay. Um, do you have any tips for those watching on how to prevent such a, from being affected by something like that? Well, in this particular case, um, it, it's an attack on Windows Server. So for the individual, unless you're running a server out of your house, there's really nothing that you can do about it. On the server side, um, there, uh, Windows, uh, Microsoft has released a patch, and it's just a ta it's patching a vulnerability. Um, the truth is that if you had the if you had the patch installed, you weren't infected. Um, but uh, on, on the on the individual user side, there's really nothing they could do at this point. And do you know what they did to go about uh, stopping the attack? <laughs> it was kind of interesting. So. Um, the server vulnerability was, was a weakness in the code. And actually, the, um, the virus had a kind of bug in it also. It was, uh, at one point, it referred back to a uh, URL that was unregistered. So what would happen is, as part of the virus, it would try and check in with this URL, this uh, uh, a web page, essentially, and when it didn't find the web page, it would continue to uh, encrypt your, your files. So uh, one of the researchers noticed the, the, the URL and actually went ahead and registered it uh, under his own name. And so when the, code, when the virus went to seek the, US, the URL, it connected, which killed the virus. Oh, wow. So it was just a, a bug in the, in the attacker's code. Okay, and that, that stopped it. And that was a 22-year-old, right? A, a 22-year-old researcher from uh, the United from the United Kingdom, and actually he had the help of a software engineer from the United States, also. Very cool. In, in figuring out what was going on. And can you tell us a little bit about um, the Central Penn IT degrees and how this would affect them, or or relate back to that? Um, we don't directly have a program against malware, but. Uh, my analogy, it's kind of like a, a medical profession. So a doctor, before he can diagnose a, uh, somebody's illness, has to have a background in biology and a background in chemistry and a background in medicine and a background in anatomy. And so the diagnosis part is putting the pieces together from the building blocks. And, and that's what we do at Central Penn. So uh, we teach a little computer science, how computers work. The only reality inside that box is an endless stream of ones and zeros. So the question is, how do you use them to do anything? So we go from there to networking, uh, to programming, and we actually teach uh, courses in, in penetration testing, where you actually get to apply these applications and see how the network is vulnerable and see how you protect the network. So I, I wouldn't say we have a direct course in malware, but we provide all the building blocks to get to that point where you can figure out what's going on. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time, and do you have any closing statements for everybody out there? Um, thank you for, for letting me on, and uh, I find it very interesting. It's, uh, there's a, there's a, a lack of cybersecurity experts in the world today because it's so technical, and um, that is going to continue for a while. So if you're interested in cybersecurity, um, get a degree, and jobs are waiting.